it's time for Coach Prime and the Prime Time era, and it starts today. And so let me introduce our 28th coach in Colorado history, Coach Prime. Welcome into a new Buff Stampede Radio. Adam Munster Tiger, the publisher of BuffStampede.com. Have a special guest today, Colorado Athletic Director Rick George. You've done a lot of media roundtables that I've been around, but I think this is our first time sitting down for a, for a podcast. Thanks for, for taking time out of your schedule. Yeah, it is, and uh, long overdue for sure. Do you have time to sit back and reflect on what you know the last 10 months have been like? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, We've had so much going on that, you know, just haven't had time to reflect and there'll be a time for that and that'll be probably in the summer um you know july june july but uh you know i like where we're at i like where we're going and with all of our sports not just football but uh feel good about where we are and um you know uh, still got a lot of work to do you're more than a decade into your tenure as the athletic director here i'd imagine it's a job that constantly has new challenges that, that crop up how have you gone about uh, maintain a level of sanity throughout, you know, the changing landscape that we've seen here in the last decade. Look, I, I always, um, you know, re- revert back to my family. That's when I kind of, you know, that's where I take a, a pause and and with my granddaughters and my daughters and being involved in their lives. But, you know, if you think about um, twenty. 19 or or you know when covid hit in that march and from that point on it's been incredible amount of change and an incredible amount of stress on on this role because there's so many different things that have changed in the last four years and it's been almost four years since we've been dealing with this i guess in 2020 uh, you know, again, uh, the end of the 1920 academic year, but that's when COVID started. And since that time, there's been a tremendous amount of change in intercollegiate athletics. I wanted to ask you about that. There are different collectives out there now for CU Athletics, Bus for Life, the 5430 Foundation NIL Collective, obviously the Buff Club. I mean, you've got the Ralphie Live mascot program. If, if there's a Colorado fan out there that's wondering today, how can I best help Colorado athletics going forward? What would you tell them? For everything that we do, one, the collectives are really important. Um, I mean, let's face it, um, you know, there was a hearing today in in Washington, D.C. on NIL, um, you know, with uh, some senators and some of my colleagues and a a few student athletes. And uh, it's a big issue in in college athletics. And um, it's it's here. um, It's not going anywhere. And we have to embrace it. Uh, and so, you know, the challenge is, you know, when you're out there, where where does, you know, where do you put your money? And, you know, where can you best support? And and look, for us to be successful, we have, the have, have to have the best student athletes. We have to keep them here when they're here. Uh, and so the collectives are in, incredibly important. And the 5430 Foundation and the Buffs uh, for Life NIL Collective, totally benefit our student athletes uh, and and that's necessary and needed Um, you know we've got a good thing going we've got to keep it going and you know the thing that we want to do is provide a great experience in our athletic department with the programmatic needs that we have for our student athletes our facilities uh, but also to ensure that you know they have the resources they need to uh, be able to navigate uh, their college life and we've got to retain them and keep them here do the Different NIL collectives, the Bus for Life and the 5430, are, do they have different objectives? The 5430 Foundation is is mostly geared towards football. Um, and the Buffs uh, for Life NIL collective is more geared towards all of our sports. And people uh, can donate into that collective and, and be specific about um, you know which student athletes they want to give, give to, whichever sports they want to give to. Um, Both of them, uh, you know, there's a, you know, I know that the 5430 Foundation has a number of charities that they benefit. 
Um, you know, the Buffs for Life is is geared more towards mental health and suicide prevention and and those kind of initiatives that I think are really important in our industry today. So in a perfect world, people would kind of allocate money across the board then? It's kind of... Yeah, look, I mean, you know, we need to get our collectives up to speed. I mean, I'll be honest, um, you know, we were a little bit behind. I think we're catching up, uh, but we still have work to do uh, with our collectives. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're wa- wavering on which way to go, go to the collective and, you know, we'll continue to work hard um, trying to raise money for our Buff Club to support the programmatic needs, the scholarship needs, the facility needs that we have for our student athletes. Given that you were part of a committee that spent a lot of time looking at NIL before it became a reality and to not have you know some of those guidelines implemented, I would imagine that was maybe a frustrating time for you and, and some of the other people that had worked on that committee? Yeah, we worked on that committee for two years with the NCAA, and when um, the Alston case was overturned on appeal, uh, the NCAA made a decision not to move forward on our recommendations, and I think that was a, a big mistake. You know, we've learned from it. We, we know where we are today. I'm, I'm currently on a committee that's uh, working on NIL, um, you know, trying to put some uh, transparency involved in that, student-athlete protections, a variety of different things. I mean, the, the thing that we need to do for NIL is we need to have one model that is across the NCAA landscape. We can't have different states with different rules. We do need support from the federal government um, to ensure that we have one system of NIL that makes sense, that works for everybody. And I know there's a lot of um, talk about that uh, in our industry. Obviously, you've long talked about the need for construction <clears throat> on the west side of Folsom Field. How much thought has kind of gone into that that process? A lot. Um, you know, we, we have a, a really good plan for the west side of the stadium. Um, you know, that's important for us. We think it allows us to get more engagements with, with students because we're going to take that first floor and it's going to be open air 365 days a week. I mean, a year, uh, students will be able to cross from the north to, to the south, uh, south to the north, you know, that live there, and it'll be a good thoroughfare for students that we can do some really positive things down there. And uh, it's also going to create some premium inventory that will be beneficial for us financially long term. Um, so it, it's necessary. It needs to be renovated. I mean, the, the qualities of the restrooms in that facility and just the quality of uh, the inside of Balch Fieldhouse um, isn't what it needs to be, and we're going to have to address it soon. Is that to a point where you have kind of a rough timeline, or is it hard to say at this point? It's hard to say at this point, but it's certainly um, on the forefront of our mind. You know, we also know that we've got to, um, you know, look at the event center and see what we need to do there. We've got a tennis facility need um, uh, you know, that we have. Uh, so there's a, a variety of things that we need to focus on and look at. And, you know, I'd like to tackle all of those issues in the next three to five years. If we took a time machine back to 1981 huh. and attended an Illinois football game, what, what type of player would we see with Rick George out there? You would see, <laughs> you would see a guy that uh, played hard, uh, that would wouldn't be afraid to uh, hit you. Um, but uh, maybe from a coverage standpoint, I could have used a little more speed. But uh, uh, you know, I, I played in forty four straight games. I'm proud of that. And um, you know, I, I started for the most of my career at, at defensive back and at corner, and was a kick blocker. But um, you know, I had a great experience there. Uh, Illinois gave me the platform. And, you know, right after I graduated, I became the recruiting coordinator when I was 23 years old and uh, learned a lot. Um, and it's kind of propelled my career to where I am today. And I'm excited about being the athletic director here for over 10 years. You've always had great rapport with the student athletes here. How much do you kind of lean on your past experience as a student athlete to kind of know what they're going through? Yeah, look, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting to see the evolution. Um, you know, when I played, you know, we would go sit in a ice tub where after practice, and now today we've got these uh, two pools that they walk through. We've got hydrotherapy. We've got all these things. It's totally different uh, then than it was today. And, and if you think about recruiting as an example, back in when I was a recruiting coordinator at 83 and even when I was here through 91, um, Man, we were we outworked people by sending handwritten notes, 
And now today it's kind of totally changed where you've got the social media component of it. And so there's just been an evolution of college sports that I think is really good. I think, you know, what they've what we've done really well, at least in the 10 years that I've been the athletic director, is we've really focused on the student athlete and what their needs are. I mean, if you think about full cost of attendance, unlimited meals, um, you know, NIL, all these different initiatives that benefit student athletes, I think is important. The facility needs, everybody's like, well, you don't need these big facilities. Well, yeah, you do, because, you know, you've got to support student athletes. You know, you look at what we've invested just at Colorado in mental health. I mean, we're now have four full-time practitioners and six years ago we had one and we didn't have really a program behind that if you look at nutrition and what we're doing from a nutritional standpoint we're now feeding them three meals a day we don't take money out of their stipend check they have a gold card that they can use uh, around um, the community all of those things are are really important we're providing health care four years after they leave for injuries that were sustained here i mean just a variety of different things that we've done um, yeah, at Colorado and, and at most places, but you know, ours comes under the umbrella of the whole uh, Crawford family, whole student athlete, and it's all the areas that touch our student athletes. And what we're seeing there with the data that we have is that the instances of injuries are going down. We're missing less playtime and less practice time, and we can tailor our 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 workouts and our conditioning and our nutrition just to what our student athletes needs are and what they're. Um, uh, mental and, and um, you know their physical wellnesses. You mentioned that you started out as a recruiting coordinator at Illinois after ending your playing career there. What led you to Boulder the first time? It was really uh, we had uh, my first daughter, um, and in those days when I was a recruiting coordinator, we traveled every day of the week. You know, I was on the road Monday to Friday. I'd meet the team uh, wherever they played, and um, you know that got tiring. We had a our daughter. Um, Jenny, uh, my first daughter, and you know, I, the next day I went back on the road for 14 days to recruit because it was in January at the end of the year. And at that point, my wife and I said, "This isn't um, this isn't going to work uh, with you on the road all the time." So, uh, fortunately, Coach McCartney had a new recruiting position. I would think I was the first recruiting coordinator here. As I think back to that, that um, it was an off the road recruiting coordinator position. And my defensive back coach when I was a freshman and a sophomore was Lloyd Carr, who was the head coach at Michigan. You know all that. Um, Lloyd called Mac at my request and recommended me. And uh, Coach McCartney and I first met watching the Boulder Fairview game, and we stood on the fence. If anybody's got old pictures of that, I'd love to see it. But we stood on the fence watching the game together back in 1986. And then he hired me in March of uh, 87. You went on to carve a different path. At a certain point, you go work for the PGA, work for the Texas Rangers as well. When did you kind of veer away from college football? What, what led to that that transition? <laughs> Probably uh, my impatience. Um, you know, I wanted to be an uh, AD in the worst way. And, um, you know, in, in those days, I, you know, I, I thought I should have been an athletic director. I'm glad nobody hired me because I wasn't ready for that. I think all of the things that I've done since then have really, you know, allowed me to be um, okay in this position. Um, but you know, I was young and wanted to be an AD and couldn't get in the seat and got frustrated. And an opportunity came up uh, to be the uh, president and CEO of a not-for-profit foundation in New Orleans that ran a PGA Tour event, um, and that kind of took me on a, a different path. And um, and then fortunately, um, you know, Chancellor DiStefano called me uh, in 2013 and said they had an AD job. And there's really only two places that I would have been an AD, and it would have been Illinois or Colorado. Illinois because I played there, and Colorado because I had been here before. And so I got that opportunity. And even though I love the PGA Tour and the Champions Tour and, and the Texas Rangers, and they're, they're now 2-0, and and it's fun to watch them, and I communicate with their owners often, um, being able to get back to support uh, young men and women, to give them the opportunities that I had. Um, I, I won't tell you how many years ago, but uh, to give them the opportunity that I have to provide the support to make sure that they're set up for the rest of their life. And we always talk about, it's about the four years while they're here, but it's the 40 after they leave. And this is 40 after I left, uh, 41. And um, that 
opportunity that I had at Illinois to play football and to get my education is what I want our student athletes to have because I've had 40 years and uh, and a great career and I'm very fortunate and blessed and um, I wouldn't have had that had I not had that opportunity at Illinois. Sure, folks are anxious for me to ask about the impact that Coach Prime has had here, and, and I'll get into that. But I did want to ask you early, about the early days w- when you came here as the athletic director and just the fundraising campaign that was uh, the, you know, the biggest in athletic department history here. What do you remember about that stretch of getting this Champion Center and the indoor practice facility put together? Well, look, I mean, that was um, this was something that we need. I know when when I came in here, um, there was a plan that was already established. Um, And as I looked at it, um, I went to the chancellor and said, I don't think this is what we should do. I need another three to four weeks to really, you know, look at this and see what we need. And um, I came back to him with a plan um, and said, this is what I think we need to do. And um, I think it's the right thing. It's it provided for all of our student athletes. All of our student athletes eat together. We've got, you know, more weight rooms than we've ever had. We've got great academic space over in uh, Dow Ward that used to be the football office. We've got locker rooms for all of our uh, Olympic sport athletes, which we didn't have when I got here. So we've made some uh, big changes that were helpful, and you know, uh, being able to fundraise for that, um, you know. We, we worked hard. It was, um, you know, we were out a lot, but it was important that we provide these facilities because we were way behind. And we're behind on, you know, the west side and the basketball arena and some of those things, you know, right now. But we addressed the immediate need that benefited all of our student athletes, and that's a combination of the Dow Ward renovation and the Champion Center. But both of these spaces have given our student athletes um, – in my opinion, great facilities that they can focus on what they came here to do, and that's get an education and participate in sports and enjoy college life. The plans that were there when you got here, was that renovations down kind of where the family housing is? No, it was all renovations here. Okay. Uh, it was, um, there was a, um, um, and I don't remember exactly, but it had to do with the adding another floor to the uh, East Side Club, the Byron White Club, and you know, building that out and, you know, renovating that. But this was something that we needed. You know, a lot of that when we when we went through this, it was a design build. So if, if you th- when we first started this, I don't think we contemplated the second floor where we've got the CU Sports Performance Center and, and, and we didn't really contemplate an indoor track. Um, we, we contemplated an indoor football field, but, you know, um, both those things happened because Eric McCarty and Dr. Podar and a couple of our Dr. McCarty, um, Dr. Podar, they said, hey, if you're building this, why don't you build a floor with, um, you know, that we can have x-rays and MRIs in that. I'm like, well, that's a good idea. Let's do that. And But, you know, we need to find a partner to help us do that. And, you know, the collaboration between Boulder Community Health and, and our CU School of Medicine has made that a reality. But what a great recruiting tool that if your son or daughter gets injured, we've got an MRI or an X-ray that we can get them to. Um, so that was one. And then the track, you know, when we were building the indoor facility, you know, Mark Wetmore said, well, why don't we put a track in there? And I said, OK, why not? And then $10 million later, um, <laughs> you know, we built a track, but it's been beneficial. And I would tell you that that facility has benefited all of our student athletes. We have so many that practice in there, that condition in there. And we've had uh, lacrosse matches that we've had to bring inside there because of weather or some uh, air quality issues. Um, so all of these facilities have benefited all of our student athletes. And, and we're proud of that. A little more than a year ago, you decided to make a change at the head football coach position. It was stressful covering a coaching search for two plus months. I can't imagine what it was like. On some level, you have more time to vet candidates, but what what is that process when it's drawn out for two plus months for an athletic director? Yeah, every everybody told me if you're gonna, you know, it's a lot better if you make the decision early because you have more time. Well, that, <laughs> I don't believe in that because there's the stress that you have during that time, and you're still trying to. Uh, play football and you you know you've got a team that you have to have an interim coach and staff and keeping all that together uh, it was a lot but I do think having that amount of time allowed us to really vet where we were going uh, and what we were doing um, and I think we obviously made the right decision <laughs> yeah it sounds like coach prime was really 
he was prepared for that meeting when you guys met. It sounded like he had a, a pretty clear plan. Was that one of the things that, that initially impressed you about him? Yeah, there was a lot that impressed me. And again, I, going back to having the time to really vet and to look at, you know, seeing his 60-minute interview and some of the YouTube stuff and uh, to see all that, it really kind of gave you a well-rounded opinion. But until he and I sat down, you know, because I wanted to, you know, him and I talk face to face. We only talked one time, and um, uh, face to face. And I laid out a plan, and I said, "Here's the good, bad, and the indifferent." Uh, and there was a lot of bad at the time, um, but I wanted to be very clear because I don't want somebody to come in here and say, "Well, you never told me that." He will say, "I didn't tell him about the weather," but um, <laughs> that, that's a, that's an aside. But um, you know, we had that conversation. But then he sat down and, and took me through his plan. So you'll see, you know, you've seen a lot of my public comments that none of this is a surprise to me because he laid it out on that first day. He told me, you know, he evaluated our team. He evaluated the recruits that had committed. Um, he laid out who his staff was going to be, um, and I think he almost got a hundred percent of that. Those people wow. that he wanted. I mean, he had a depth chart. But the, the ones that were first were, were the ones that he brought in here. So, um, you know, I was really impressed with his attention to detail and just his passion and his values and, you know, meeting his family and things like that. I mean, it, it's um, exactly what we needed at Colorado, and, and we're seeing the fruits of that uh, right now. Coach Prime has mentioned that he was out to lunch with Andre Hart when he made that phone call. What, what do you remember about that phone call? <laughs> um, well, I, I had just finished my normal Tuesday in Dallas with my CFP meetings, and um, I'm at gate E7, which is the gate that we I flew out of every Tuesday uh, during that process, and I get a call from uh, his business partner, uh, Constance, um, and um, she said, Coach would like me to get a three-way call, and my first initial thought was, they're going to say they're not interested. You know, they, and I was like, well, here we go. And so he gets on, and, you know, in typical coach fashion, and he always, you know, whenever he talks to me, he always says, hey, my man. So he says, hey, my man, I'm coming. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> well, I'm coming, and I'm like, you know, and he just said what he has said publicly is that the Lord spoke to me today, and um we coming, and that's where that came from. And you know, the only unfortunate thing is we we kind of kept that under wraps. But um, you know, that's kind of how it evolved. And um, you know, um, we're we're here today and and feeling good about you know where we're headed. The pilot program that allowed Coach Prime to bring in the top ranked recruiting class in the country. Could you kind of share how challenging that was to put together with Phil and, and, and Todd Solomon and kind of what that has done for, for the football program? No, I look, look, I think that's done a lot for the program. And I think, you know, one of the things that needs to be said is, you know, the chancellor, our regents, um, President Solomon, um, our um, faculty on campus have embraced. And this isn't just for athletes. This is for all students. Um, but having them make the changes that they made were important and helpful for us because it allowed us to accept some credits that maybe weren't uh, accepted in the past, and um, and and that's been uh, instrumental for us uh, to be able to compete uh, on the recruiting level and at the same time give that opportunity for other students, not just student athletes around the country, and particularly in this state. What's it like when you go out in public now and just see? people everywhere with CU gear on. It's great. Um, and, and you know, I'm really, you know, glad for our fans that have gone through a really tough, you know, 10 to 15 years from a football perspective of the success that we've had and the excitement that we've had around the program. And I think bringing Coach in is elevate our excitement, even to levels that I never expected uh, because it's national, it's international. Uh, the community's embraced him and – uh, the state and it, and just there's so many positive things that uh, are going on out there and and we're just getting started you know that's what you know I know expectations high because they should be high I mean coach has high expectations I have high expectations on where we should be in football and um, and I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg about where we think this can go um, coach and I are excited about um, working together to make you know this program uh, an elite program and uh, we're looking forward
you're bringing in a lot more revenue these days, but I'm sure operating costs have changed as well with that. How have things changed from a budgetary standpoint? Has that become more challenging now? Well, look, I mean, we, we've obviously invested more in, in Coach uh, Prime um, and his staff and, and some of the needs that they have, and, and that's important. Um, you know, we also had some challenges, have had some challenges with – uh, less distribution from the Pac-12 because of some uh, issues that they've had at the conference level, and and so you know, look, uh, you know, we're, we're hitting budget for tickets. We budgeted, we we planned, we knew that uh, playing USC, Nebraska, and Colorado State would make for a big year from a ticketing standpoint, and um, so we had a strategy behind that, um, and we're not quite to budget yet, but we will be. Um, and then, you know, our fundraising obviously is important to that. But I think where we're seeing big gains are in the viewership, which we're not able to monetize yet, but we will in the future. Um, but our concessions are up, our, you know, licensing and um, apparel's up, um, you know, so significantly. And and then you take the, the, the viewership that we have and the, uh, the social media uh, followers that we have have grown exponentially, and it's just hard to quantify that at this point. But I do know that, um, you know, it's impacting our businesses in this community, which is great uh, in a positive way. And, um, you know, we're hopeful that uh, they'll get behind what we're doing here as well, because we, in my opinion, we're at a moment in time where we've got to we've got to uh, put all of our chips in the center and 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 work together to make this tro program top to bottom all sports truly um, uh, at a high level and you know that's our focus awesome rick i appreciate you again for taking time out of your schedule let's not uh, wait another 11 years before we sit down and do a podcast <laughs> no, I, Sound I, good? i'm with you there let's go <laughs> all right and thanks everybody out there Thank for tuning you. in